hundreds of volunteers assembled on the ellipse just south of the White House early this morning. They came to lay out 11,000 hand-sewn panels of cloth, each with the name of someone who has died of AIDS. Whoever happens to be at the corner, tie that corner down. Then, as scores of celebrities, AIDS activists, and friends and parents of victims of the disease solemnly read the thousands of names, Washington, D.C. got its newest monument. It was a somber, tearful, and huge reminder that nearly 60,000 Americans have died of a disease that has no cure and for which there is no vaccine. After the 14 acres of panels were laid out, members of the public were invited to walk among them. Fred Ball came from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to help set up the Names Project. Because I think that everyone should know about this stupid disease that's taking away too many of our friends and people that I've, that not only me, but everyone I know has lost that some people to AIDS. And it's just, there are too many people unaware of it happening. And everyone should know. Organizers say the purpose of the Names Project is to remind everyone that victims of the disease are individuals. Many visitors to the Names Project, with whom we spoke today, hope the presence of the huge book will spur the government to pay more attention to the disease. They should um, hurry up and find a cure for it, that we need to spend more money um, re on research for AIDS. This level of caring and uh, uh, support, uh, I think, has to, in the end, make a difference. Maybe too slow, but um, it's got to make a difference. Got to believe that. Organizers of the Names Project were ready for a short rainfall which occurred late this morning. Then, when they got word that President Bush was helicoptering from the White House for his surgery, they quickly unfurled the huge display to remind the nation's chief executive of the extent of the disease. In fact, it is only from the air, or from atop the Washington Monument, that the size of the display can be appreciated. The Names Project is now so large that, in the future, only portions of the quilt will be on display. So the last chance for anyone to see the entire Names Project will be here at the Ellipse, Saturday until 6, and Sunday until 5. John Henrahan, Channel 5 News. Covers 14 acres of the Ellipse behind the White House. It's dedicated to all of the victims of AIDS. The quilt is comprised of nearly 11,000 panels representing AIDS victims from 19 countries. Cleve Jones thought up the AIDS quilt concept in 1986. He wants to deliver a message to the president. We have lost more Americans to this epidemic than we lost during the entire Vietnam conflict. I want the president to go on television and share with the American people his plan to defeat AIDS. The AIDS quilt is growing too fast to be shown again in its entirety in Washington. It will be on display on the ellipse from 10 in the morning till 6 in the evening, Saturday and Sunday. Bush administration. Tonight, with the National AIDS Memorial quilt stretched out on the Washington ellipse, AIDS activists are demanding greater access to treatment of the deadly disease. These demonstrators march from the Treasury Building to the White House, urging federal and local governments to guarantee free AIDS treatment. The gay group called Out organized tonight's protest. It was one of 20 such demonstrations held across the country. The AIDS quilt comprising 10,000 panels was spread out today over 14 acres on the ellipse. Families and friends of people who have died of AIDS have come to view the quilt as a tombstone of sorts. 10,000 names were represented on the quilt. It took more than seven hours today for volunteers, including myself, to read all the names. Stephen Devlin, Doran Tisdale, and my friend, Max Robinson. Organizers say they hope the quilt will influence President Bush and other government leaders to commit more money for AIDS research. It will remain on the ellipse through Sunday, but this is the last year the quilt will be displayed anywhere. It has simply grown too large. George Watson and my friends John Hullerman, Joe Jenkins, David Rivera. This weekend's memorial to those who have died of AIDS continues tonight. Candles lit up the dark sky from the Washington Monument to the Lincoln Memorial. AIDS activists are demanding greater access to treatment of the disease. Earlier today, a platform was opened for family and friends to remember those with AIDS. Some read aloud the names of those that appear on the National Aid Memorial quilt. The 13-ton quilt will be on display for the last time in Washington tomorrow. We'll have more on the ellipse tonight. Thousands showed up marching to the Lincoln Memorial. 
Don Williams has details. At the Lincoln Memorial, there was a sea of twinkling lights. Tonight's vigil is in many ways about yesterday. It's about our memories of those we still love. But it's also about rededicating ourselves to the years of struggle that lie ahead. It is the conclusion of a day when the huge AIDS quilt laid on display at the Ellipse. From all over the country, they came to pay respect. There are now more than 60,000 names on the quilt, people who have died from the incurable disease, a number that grows daily, a reality close to many that are here. Because I have a son who's 20 months old and has AIDS, and someday he'll be on the quilt. This is a child who was born with AIDS. It's nothing he did. He has a very short life expectancy. The first time I saw him, you know, I thought, I'll never see this child again. He's not going to live. We've got to make, we've got to make a statement. This is a big problem. They say this is the most impressive AIDS demonstration yet. And next year, many say it will get bigger as long as AIDS continues its rampage through the country. So one more time, we are reminded that there are Americans in pain, in search of human dignity. They are saying to us in this case that it is not enough to recognize that we have a problem. It will only be enough when we do more to solve it. Don Williams, News 4, at the Lincoln Memorial. And a last note on the AIDS quilt. It will be on display tomorrow again at the Ellipse, but that will be the last time. The massive quilt with nearly 11,000 panels and weighing in the neighborhood of 13 tons is simply too much to move. So the